I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this video will cover all of the seven mixed juices available in Dead Rising with information on how to make them, what they do, and their practical applications. This will contain some minor spoilers for a few psychopaths, as well as some story elements. Mixed juices are efficient healing items and can provide powerful or useful buffs. These can, unfortunately, only be consumed by Frank. Survivors won't accept Frank's crazy concoctions. If you're actively escorting or rescuing survivors, you'll want to carry some standard healing items. If you're not, you should exclusively be a juice enjoyer. They're just the most efficient ways to heal. This guide is not going to go over every single food combination to make the juices. I'll only be covering the easiest and most practical mixes in the context of Dead Rising. There are quite literally hundreds of different combinations, but really, you really only need to know the ones that are actually easy to make. Blenders are also only available during 72 hour and overtime mode. They are removed from infinity mode, presumably because it would make it too easy if you could multiply the effectiveness of cheap healing items like cookies and snacks. As if infinity mode needed even more reasons to be annoying. A quick note here, but all juices can be boosted with the cooking book. Most of the time it's not overly practical, but it can be moderately useful. If you want additional information on books, you can check out the other dedicated video on the subject. The Energizer Juice will heal Frank for 6 health blocks and give him 10 seconds of invulnerability. During this time you can still be grabbed or hit by zombies, but Frank will take no damage. The most common mix for an Energizer is simply 2 cabbages. You can also combine cabbage with an orange juice. Though this takes a little bit of extra time, you can also mix a randomizer juice and a zombait juice together to make an Energizer. The primary ingredient used for making most Energizers is a cabbage. Cabbages are only readily available in Sion's food and stuff, and it's usually a pretty out of the way trip. It's pretty rare that you're actively in the North Plaza during Dead Rising. If you're planning to make a bunch of Energizer juices, it's recommended to grab as many cabbages as you can carry from Sion's food and stuff. Then head south to Wonderland Plaza. If you have the shortcut open, you can head through the restrooms to Paradise Plaza. Otherwise, cross Leisure Park back to Paradise Plaza. Now combine the cabbages with orange juice available in Colombian Roast Masters. This is the simplest way to stockpile multiple energizers. If you only want to mix one energizer for gourmet achievement progress or an upcoming psychopath battle, your best bet is to make a randomizer and a zombie in the food court and mix them together. You can do this by combining a cooking oil from Jade Paradise and a wine from Chris's Fine Foods to make a randomizer. Next, grab the two ears of corn from Central Tacos and combine them to make a zombait. Finally, combine the randomizer and zombate to make an energizer juice. This does take a little bit of time, but it's an easy way to get an energizer every time you enter the food court. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot of practical usefulness for the energizer. The 10 seconds of invulnerability is very powerful, no doubt, but energizers are also the most difficult mixed drink to make en masse. If you want an energizer, it usually means you're gonna have to go out of your way to get one. 10 seconds of invulnerability is a very strong buff, but 10 seconds is very short, and you'll likely have the effect wear off before you really get to benefit from it. It's a strong healing item, but other mixed drinks are more readily available, making them generally more appealing. If you're willing to make them, energizers are a strong option for any psychopath battle, or just general usage, however. The Nectar Juice will heal Frank for 6 health blocks, and will cause a queen to spawn near Frank. Queens will only spawn near Frank after having witnessed the quote-unquote queen cutscene in the warehouse on the night of the first day. Otherwise, no queens will spawn when you consume a nectar. Drinking a second nectar while having the nectar effect active will also not spawn a second queen. You'll have to wait for the effect to wear off completely before consuming a second nectar for a queen. The easiest recipes to make a nectar are two orange juices, two apples, as well as apple and orange juice. Realistically, most of the time when you combine two fruits, it will result in a nectar. The most common mix for a nectar is simply two orange juices. This is most readily available in Colombian Roast Masters in Paradise Plaza. Conveniently, there's a blender right beside the orange juice cooler so you can make as many nectars as you want whenever you're in Paradise Plaza. This also happens to be all the time, as you're constantly running through Paradise Plaza throughout the course of the game. The Nectar is a solid healing item with a useful effect. You can use the Nectar to heal, and then grab a zombie clearing queen to refill your inventory. You can think of a queen as a grenade, essentially. Nectars provide 6 healing, which is 2 more healing than an orange juice is for. 
It doesn't take that long to mix two orange juices into a nectar, and it will provide you with extra healing. During 72 hour mode, there are several survivor events that are made significantly easier with a queen or two. You can pick these up through the course of the game if you're paying attention, but it's very easy to force a queen with a nectar. The most notable survivors here are Heather and Pamela in Paradise Plaza and Nick and Sally in Wonderland Plaza. This is because they spawn surrounded by zombies. Being able to force the ability to get a queen prior to these events makes it significantly more safe and easy to rescue these specific survivors. You can pre-make a nectar and then head to the zone the survivors are in. Once you're ready, you can chug the nectar, grab the queen, and then head inside. This will make for an easy rescue. Otherwise, queens are just nice to have. Sometimes things can go south and a survivor will get stuck in a pack of zombies, a queen will make short work of any crowds, and in a way that won't have you accidentally damaging survivors. In overtime mode, you will need to gather 10 queens for Isabella to make a proto zombrex for Frank. This can be done slowly, over time, with nectars. You can prepare for this during 72 hour mode. Once the military arrives in 72 hour mode, you can hide out and mix a few nectars. Then you can drink one and snatch the queen and wait for the effect to wear off. You can repeat this process as many times as you want to or are able to, to start with several queens in overtime mode. This does save you a little bit of time and headache in overtime mode, but you will have to give up some valuable inventory space to hold on to these queens. A final note about nectar, but nectar's effect has a little bit of anti-synergy with the cooking book. You'll normally chug a nectar for the 6 health blocks and the queen. The quicker the nectar's effect wears out, the faster you can consume another nectar for an additional queen. The effect lasting longer is a hindrance if you're chugging nectars for queens. Just a little food for thought. If you're doing this, make sure you ditch the cooking book. The quick step juice will heal Frank for 6 health blocks and greatly increase his movement speed for 30 seconds. The easiest recipes to make quick steps are wine and wine, wine and orange juice, coffee creamer and orange juice, and two milks or two yogurts. The easiest way to make quick steps vary from day to day. During the first day of Dead Rising, there will always be two coffee creamers in the security room. You can take these down to Colombian Roastmasters in Paradise Plaza and combine them with orange juice to make two quick steps every single time you leave the security room. Wine is readily available in the food court. If you snatch it all up, you can easily make three quick steps every time you pass through the food court. Remember, it's just wine and wine. Dead simple. Then in Frozen Dreams, you can combine the two yogurts by the cash register and the two milks on the floor to make two quick steps every time you enter the food court. If you really want to stockpile quick steps, you can grab as much orange juice as possible from Colombian Roastmasters and bring it to the food court to mix with wine. The opposite is also true, taking wine from the food court to the orange juice coolers in Colombian Roastmasters. Otherwise, you can easily get 5 quick steps if you combine all the wine in the food court and the 2 yogurts and 2 milks in Frozen Dreams. That's basically half your inventory of quick steps. It's very easy to stockpile quick steps. Besides the Energizer's Invincibility, the Quick Steps Movement Speed Bonus is the most advantageous mixed juice to have active during Psychopath Battles. Most notable are for any ranged psychopaths like Sniper Carlito and the Hall family. You can chug a quick step and very quickly close the distance for melee attacks. Normally, it's hard to catch up and damage these psychopaths without a ranged weapon. The quick step will let you run up to them and kill them very quickly. Other than psychopaths, quick steps are just useful tools for getting around the mall. The timeline can be kind of tight, and anything that you have at your disposal to speed up running from A to B is positive. You can drink to top yourself up, and then use the movement speed bonus to get wherever you want to go at a faster clip. Quick steps really should be your go-to healing for the speed increase and the efficient healing they offer. You should make these every time you're in the food court if you've got time to spare. Randomizer is by far the weakest mixed drink and should be actively avoided under most circumstances. Most of the time, it'll make Frank sick. This causes Frank to periodically stop, drop whatever he's carrying, and then grab his stomach in pain. This effect persists for quite a while. Randomizers can also occasionally give you a random juice effect. Obviously, this is not ideal because it's uncontrollable. In the best case scenario, you'll get an energizer or a quick step effect. Alternatively, you could get something that's actively bad or completely neutral. You don't really want to use randomizers. Besides, the other drinks are easy enough to stockpile and will give you a consistent effect that you want at the time. You'll only want to ever make and consume one randomizer for the gourmet achievement. It has no practical applications otherwise in 72 hour or overtime mode. In infinity mode, 
you do technically have a chance to get an energizer effect from a randomizer, which is beneficial as it stops you from losing health. That being said, this effect is totally random and not worth talking about. You also can't mix randomizers in infinity mode, you have to get them randomly from a psychopath. The easiest mix for a randomizer is just using a cooking oil and a wine in the food court. Cooking oils are readily available in Jade Paradise in the food court, and wine is readily available from Chris's Fine Foods. You can use the nearby blender in Frozen Dreams or the Dark Bean to make the randomizer. Make this and consume this once when you're going for the gourmet achievement, otherwise you should skip it for other alternatives. The Spitfire Juice will heal Frank for 6 health blocks and make it so Frank's spit will have the equivalent damage and range of handgun bullets. This effect lasts for 3 minutes. For Frank to spit, unequip him so he's not holding anything, and then use the aim command and fire it as if you were using a gun. The most practical recipes to make a Spitfire are by using Ice Pops and Ice Pops, Cooking Oil and Cooking Oil, Zucchini and Zucchini, and Zucchini and Corn. Snacks and Snacks will also work. The easiest location to get Spitfires is, unsurprisingly at this point, the food court. If you want to make multiple, you can take the two cooking oils from Jade Paradise and then head into Frozen Dreams. Combine the two cooking oils into one Spitfire. Then you can grab the two ice pops from inside Frozen Dreams to make a second Spitfire. If you need more than two for whatever reason, you can head down to That's a Spicy Meatball <laughs> and grab the zucchini and corns off the ground like an absolute animal. Then you can combine two zucchinis or a zucchini and a corn for additional Spitfires. This lets you make four per trip into the food court relatively quickly. The Spitfires effect isn't overly useful in most circumstances. Turning Frank's spit into a projectile that's the equivalent of a handgun isn't the strongest option throughout most of the game. It's not terrible, but most of the time you have greatly superior options for beating zombies into oblivion and defeating psychopaths. However, there is one very clear and practical application for the Spitfire, and it's for the final boss of the game, Brock. Under normal circumstances, before you fight Brock, all your inventory is stripped of you. You'll be forced to fight Brock barehanded. However, if you chug down a mixed juice before getting in the Jeep, all your buffs will persist past the fight with the tank into the fight with Brock. Obviously, most of these juice buffs are pretty lackluster, but Spitfire is extremely good since you're just stripped of all your inventory. You can jump down to the lower part of the tank and shoot handgun-powered spit at Brock. Brock will block it, of course, but it will be powerful enough to get through his guard and you can wear him down with chip damage well before the 3 minute Spitfire buff wears off. It should not take you longer than 3 minutes to beat Brock with the Spitfire. That would just be ridiculous. The only other time Spitfire would be preferable is if you're planning a self-imposed no-weapon playthrough of Dead Rising. That would suddenly put Spitfires on top of the drink priority queue. I wouldn't recommend it though. A no-weapons playthrough sounds absolutely terrible. If you would like to make a Spitfire right at the beginning of the game, you can grab the two snacks in the entrance plaza by the benches that trigger the zombie invasion. You can then take these to Colombian Roastmasters to combine them into a Spitfire at the start of the game. That will give you a Spitfire to take on Carlito before you get access to the food court. The Untouchable Juice will heal Frank for 6 health blocks and make Frank unable to be grabbed by zombies for 1 minute. You can still be hit by zombie swings, but zombies will generally be less aggressive towards Frank as a result. The easiest recipes to make Untouchables are Pie and Pie, Pie and Orange Juice, Baguette and Baguette, Baguette and Pie, Finally, baguette and orange juice. The absolute easiest way to make untouchables is in Colombian Roast Masters in Paradise Plaza. You can easily make three by combining a pie on the counter with an orange juice from the cooler. If you only need one untouchable, you can just combine two nearby pies. Alternatively, you can go to Alfresca Plaza to the cafe and combine the limitless pies from the display after you smash it for as many untouchables as you could possibly want. Untouchables don't have a ton of specific usage, but there are some reasonable times to make and use them. The obvious choice is any time you're going through an area with densely packed zombies. If you ever have to run through Alfresca Plaza, which is almost always super densely packed, it can make using an untouchable worthwhile. If you're coming through the entrance plaza side, you can take a quick detour, mix yourself an untouchable with two pies, and then quickly make it through Alfresca Plaza to the food court while the untouchable effect is active. The further you progress in Dead Rising, the more dense the zombie packs will get, which means untouchables will increase in value as the game goes on. 
Getting grabbed is obviously slow, and if you're on a time crunch, a few grabs can be very annoying to deal with, so you can view Untouchable as a potential time saver in the right light. The most obvious use for Untouchables is during the case Bomb Collector, where you need to navigate the maintenance tunnels. Ideally, you'll have a car for this, but your plan can go south quickly, especially if you're a terrible driver like I am. If this happens, having a few Untouchables makes navigating the maintenance tunnels significantly faster and far less dangerous. Untouchables are also a reasonable alternative to Nectars as simply standard healing items. They heal for the same, which is 6 health blocks, and the effect is arguably equivalent. With the Untouchable, you'll get no grabs versus getting a Queen from the Nectar. That's your call. Untouchables are not nearly as plentiful as Nectars, but you can make 3 every time you enter Paradise Plaza, compared to as many Nectars as you can hold. Not a bad option to consider making Untouchables instead of Nectars. That'll be your call. Be advised, however, if you have survivors with you and you're abusing untouchables to run through crowds, you're going to have them get stuck on zombies and likely die. Just a friendly warning. The zombie juice will heal Frank for 6 health blocks and increase the range that zombies will notice Frank. Frank will essentially become all nearby zombies' priority target. This effect lasts for 60 seconds. The most practical recipes for Zombate are two corns and milk with pie. The simplest way to make a single Zombate is to head to Central Tacos in the food court. You can grab two corns from inside Central Tacos and then head next door to the dark bean and blend them together for a Zombate. If you'd like to make multiple Zombates, the easiest place is in Colombian Roastmasters. No, not that one. The Colombian Roastmasters Cafe in Alfresca Plaza. Here you can use the 4 milks on the ground and combine them with the limitless pies in the display after you smash it to make 4 zombates. It's pretty clear that zombates main usage is for when you're attempting to rescue survivors. With zombate active, zombies appear to largely ignore survivors in favor of trying to get to Frank. If you can spare the inventory, it will make survivors largely be ignored by zombies. The main issue is that a zombate only lasts for 60 seconds. This means it could very realistically wear out in the middle of a crowd, which could result in an extremely bad day. I personally prefer to clear zombies out, but if you're under a time crunch or doing some self-imposed challenge, mixing a few zombates and abusing them to largely ignore clearing out huge swaths of zombies does seem like a mostly viable option. Assuming there's not too many zombies, and your survivors aren't out for blood, that is. Since zombates only last a minute, if you're doing this strategy, you'll need several of them per group of survivors. Alfresca Plaza is also kind of out of the way, which makes stockpiling zombates more difficult than other juices. But if you've got the time, it's always an option. Zombates are also likely very useful in trying to finish out the Karate Champ achievement. Zombate will make zombies come closer to you for your special moves like the Double Lariat. You'll likely get larger groups of zombies to test out your Red Cyclone cosplay on. In practical terms, Zombate are good at what they're supposed to do, but it just doesn't last nearly long enough. If you're damaged and escorting survivors, it's a no-brainer. Chug one. Otherwise, you can safely skip the Zombate. That's every mixed juice covered with all of the juicy details. Just remember, only Frank can drink mixed juices. Always be prepared with some additional healing items if you're rescuing survivors. It can make the difference between a rescue and a premature death. If you're not going to deal with any survivors, go ahead and play bartender and mix the juiciest juices and chug them all down. Thanks for watching everyone, a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your support goes a long way with helping the channel out. If you like the Dead Rising content, you can check out the Dead Rising playlist which features multiple video guides on how to rescue all the survivors and how to get all the achievements for the Dead Rising series. This is hours of fun for the whole family. You can also like and subscribe for more Dead Rising content. Thanks for watching.